Hello and welcome to Destiny Digit. I am she and she can see. Thank you to the old, the new, and those just stopping through. This is the Soul Urge number one reading. Your Soul Urge number is found by using all and only vowels. All of the vowels and only the vowels in your full birth name, first, middle, and last. So you can use the link in the description box to do this, but obviously if you're here, you already know that your soul urge number is one. And so this number reveals to you what is motivating you from the inside, like what's pushing you, what's driving you. Um, this, this talks about like what your higher self is pulling you towards. And so to have a one talks about you being a leader, a trailblazer. You are the lantern that others look to in order to find their way through darkness. That's the ability you have. And so let's talk about a spectrum. No number is good or bad, but energies align themselves on a spectrum. And so as a one, on one end, positively, we have independence, being very independent, right? You can operate alone, the lone wolf, who even alone can, can blaze trails. But on the opposite end of that spectrum, we have codependency. So instead of being able to do it alone, it's needing to link up with others in order to take a step, not really being able to stand in your own power. Now that would be the, spe the spectrum for you. So this reading is a reading about your inner voice. It's about your dreams, your goals, the things that push you and drive you from within. So first column is talks about where you stand. First card we have is power. The image on the card is a thunderstorm. And the only thing that lights up is the lightning in this card. Everything else is dark. And so I feel like you are that lightning. I feel like you you understand. You've had maybe possibly a light bulb moment where you really understand the capacity of, of like of you and your strength. But you can only find this in the darkness, right? The skies are dark in the image. But the bolt is the only light, and, and I think it represents that moment of clarity, but it also talks about, you know, you are that bolt. You had to make it through dark times to even understand your strength. I think about going to the gym, right, just to understand what I'm saying about understanding your strength. Um, if you go to the gym three to four times a week and you lift weights, um, compare yourself to somebody that has not been to the gym in three to four decades okay now think about the relationship that the the one that goes to the gym has with their body the understanding think about all that you know about what you can do because it was an investment you invested in self and now you clearly your your, your return I'm so sorry your return was intentional it's intentional now in this, we're talking about your body. Your body is going to reflect what you've done with it, to it, and for it. Now, on the opposite end of the spectrum, not going for years and years and years, months and months, weeks and weeks, that also reflects the that you didn't choose you this as your investment. And so you wouldn't see the power in your vessel, in your body, because you didn't really intentionally invest in it. Like the other one did and I'm just using that as a physical example just to say that you understand your strength because you realize what you've been through and so you know going to the gym is we choose that we choose that obstacle we choose that to be our investment but life obviously brings us things that we don't feel we have chosen subconsciously we have but you know, we kind of forget that along the way. So we this is about going through the dark times and realizing that you had to be your own light. And every time you had to do that, every time you had to first show yourself um, your own way, it did something to you. It changed you. You'll never be the same when you wake up tomorrow, right? Like that's that. That's that. And so you're standing in your power and others can see you others can see you you are a light you are the lantern the four of swords talks about right now you know being in a state of rest renewal and healing and this comes after the three of swords so the three of swords talks about kind of like heartbreak betrayal and loss not that any of those three have to be what you've been through but it's definitely a time where your heart was strained it was pierced for some reason or another but that is exactly 
it, it, that was like you lifting the weight. That's what strengthened you. And so now this Four of Swords, the, the reflection period, is it's you, it's you being able to really think and, and make peace with where you've been, realize you're not the same, you've gained something even if you had to lose something. And now when you wake up, when you step into the next thing, you're, you're someone, you know, it's time to become the new, right? This is the renewal after some type of strenuous period. Now, companionship shows up beneath this. So this could talk about a relationship, you know, um, and realizing that you have to stand in your power and only the relationships that allow you to stand in your power are the ones that you need to maintain. Um, the companionship card says giving someone your complete presence is an astonishing gift so this is like an oath you're making to self but this is also what you are expecting from any relationship that you are in this is what's being expected of you right to show up to give all of yourself because that's the gift your investment your time your energy and so you're realizing your power you're realizing what you what you what you can provide others and if you're not in a relationship with someone else and this is just saying you are realizing that when you take your power after realizing it that's one win but then when you put it back into yourself that's a double win like that's that's even better you've just doubled up because you've given all of you to you so this is showing up in totality for self or another um, next column Card 2 talks about where you're going. We have fulfillment. It's a peach, a beautiful peach. And so, you know, this talks about finally being ripe, finally being ready for what you've been preparing for, wanting, feeling, you know, like the peach being ripe and, and, and juicy and plump and and just everything a peach should be, it had to go through a process. You had to go through a process to get to this stage of fulfillment. And this process happened because you had to learn your power, your strength, the fact that you alone with no one else are a gift, right? So you're walking, you're stepping into fulfillment. Beneath this, we have the Eight of Coins. So this is a card of work. This is mastery. This is intentionally focusing your time and your energy on, on something that matters to you. And so sometimes that means learning more, going back to school, taking a course, finding an advisor, a mentor, a coach. Sometimes you may have to become one of those things, especially as a one because you're leading another. But nonetheless, this is saying that there's something I care about that's a part of my fulfillment and I want to invest self into it. I want to master this, right? I want to master this. This is a part of my fulfillment. Mastery of whatever this thing is, right? So whatever you could do every day, all day, that would be your eight of coins. Beneath this, you have your path. So this is about being in alignment. So whatever it is you're working towards that will walk you and lead you into your fulfillment is 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 divinely called for you. It's 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 your path, right? And so you're in your power because you're on your path. It says, Dear Lord, help me trust that there's a plan far beyond what I can see through my fears and illusions. And so even when we can't see the next step, this is trusting that God, the divine, the universe, your ancestors, your, this is trusting that your entire existence was created for a purpose. There is an intended path, but it requires you to be in your knowingly, it requires you to knowingly be in your own power to understand your own value, to understand your own worth in order to walk this path right you got to make it worthwhile you're not going to come back as you again and so this matters this totally matters 
And so you're on your path, you're in your path, you're in alignment, you're in purpose. And this is about mastering whatever it is your path has called you to do because it's time to walk into your fulfillment. Card three talks about your inspiration, right? So what is ex- what it, what inspires you to do what you do? And you have the delight card. And the delight is, is joy, right? What brings you the most joy? This is a real question. What brings you the most joy in life? What makes you smile every time? What, what do you never become bored with? Right? What brings you joy? Who brings you joy? Is there a place? Is there a location where this happens? Like, you know, really think, ask self, what brings me joy? And so you're inspired by, by, by something that just totally puts you in a state of bliss. Now, beneath that is the Seven of Swords. Such a tricky card, right? Like, really, Seven of Swords? We were, be- we were rocking beautiful. Um, I have a very weird relationship, 11-11, on the time clock, uh, with the Seven of Swords. Like, it just, uh, it gets me. Not gonna lie, it gets me. And so, this is a card of needing to operate behind the scenes for good or for bad, okay? This is a card of strategy. It's about needing to use caution. Um, and, and, and really being mindful of why this, why you must be cautious, right? Something may not be as it seems either with you or with others. So this could be a card of delusion, like convincing ourselves or not really being honest with self about what's going on, what we're thinking, what we're taking part in, right? So this could be, you know, us not really being clear about what brings us delight. Um, I also think that this is about, you know, we're, this this could be a sketchy card. Okay, let's just we'll just agree. This is a sketchy card. This could be somebody else, you know, deception, moving in darkness, like somebody kind of being deceitful. But sometimes this is moving in silence. This is moving in silence. And so, listen, the divine abundance shows up beneath this card. And I think this is about, you know, when God speaks to us, we all have our own path. And so your direction, your assignment is yours. No one else has to sign off on it. You don't get your assignment and then go take it to anyone else in your life to make sure that what God said was true. Like, that's not how it works. And so once you know your assignment, and your soul does, this is your soul urge reading, your soul definitely knows the assignment. Once you know the assignment, this is about trusting it, even in in the event that others won't. And so when I see the sneakiness of this card, I think that this is this is you realizing that and remember you're the lone wolf you're the one and so you really can't take anybody with you on the journey it's you anyway like you're designed to be able to lead that is a singular position that is a one man one woman one person like thing you know and so this is I feel like moving in silence but trusting you know, being able to truly trust the fact that all of this is taking you towards your delight, your fulfillment, right? This is about literally immersing yourself in joy. If joy was a pool, this is about you jumping in it, but trusting it so much so that even moving inside, like you may have to do it in secrecy divine abundance comes up beneath that it says you're born to align with love's will follow the Tao and serve something beyond the ego learn to be abundance not chase it learn to be abundance and not chase it well you've already done that because you understand that you 
just your presence, just the amount of energy you, you invest in something is a gift. You're standing in your power, so you, you already understand your worth and your value. And so once you know that, that really changes the relationships and the dynamics that you have with other people. And not everybody understands you or your assignment because it, it wasn't created by them. It was created by the creator, right? And so once you're in alignment, strategy, the way you move, may at times need to be calculated. Seven is a number of, of, of analyzing. Right? It's a number of logic and knowledge. Sometimes you have to withdraw and calculate. You have to really be a few steps ahead. And so in order to get to your joy, you may have to dance a little in ways that makes others think you're going this way. But in reality, you're going that way. Next card, next row talks about our fears. Right? And so you literally have leadership and, and ones, your leaders, right? Others are meant to follow you. Every step you take, someone else should be walking behind you, right? And you travel alone. You do. You travel alone and whatever, whatever path or trail you carve out is not only for self, but it's for all those that are coming behind you. Right, but for that to come up under your fear, you know, that's you not really being comfortable walking in your power, walking in your strength. That's you not knowing what's on the other end of you going to the gym three to four times a week. That's, n that's you not trusting what kind of body you're about to build, right? Beneath leadership, you have the queen of coins, the queen of pentacles. So this is about abundance. So you've got divine abundance and then you have the queen of pentacles, right? This is the nurturer, the provider. This is, this is, mm, this is mastery of the eight of pentacles. Remember we had the eight of pentacles, which was mastering something that you loved, something that brought you fulfillment. Well, to get from the eight to the king or the queen you've gotten the throne you're on the throne and so i think you're fearful of that that seat i think you're fearful of sitting on that throne you may not know that that is actually where you're supposed to be that is the position from which you're supposed to lead you're supposed to be that queen or king of pentacles right prosperity runs through your veins home and family is is your is is where you have mastered your craft right your home is your first business the way you run your home or don't is a reflection of how you show up everywhere else in life this is your starting point your first co-workers your your are your family members that share homes with you and and the way you navigate home really matters in how you show up in the rest of the world and so listen we could be a little fearful because you know i listen anything that goes wrong in adulting is childhood trauma just use it all the time it works but it's also very true because that's what wires our subconscious and so if you're fearful of your ability to be out front and ahead and if you don't know that the throne is actually your seat, why don't you know that? Who told you that wasn't, right? That's going back to everything that convinced you that wasn't actually your position, that that wasn't actually your path. Beneath, we have limitless. So who told you that there were limits? Who put you in a box? Who said there was a ceiling? Right? This is about, our fears are about having, you know, this is about taking a leap of faith, which means you're, I'm going to have more faith than fear. I'm afraid to lead. I'm afraid that I won't go as far as I feel. I'm afraid that, that others won't, I'm afraid that this position won't turn out into, you know, any, whatever. It doesn't, it's, it could be anything, but, but it's you not knowing where you're supposed to land. 
right? And so this is about trusting the journey and not the outcome. And when you know your value and your worth and your strength and your potential, it's a lot easier to trust the journey. Limitless says, see yourself open to receive in the most miraculous ways. The divine can use anything and anyone. Yo, I love this card. It's just, it is the card of fair game. A squirrel could bring you a gem. A squirrel? Yes, of course it can. You know, watching a squirrel could provoke a certain thought or flash or, you know, uh, something to come to mind. Just seeing the way the squirrel moves or climbs a tree. You know, just something. Right? You never know where it's... Okay, that, that was a reach. Maybe not a squirrel. But this is just saying that, like, I'm open. You know, God, I'm ready. Divine creator, I'm ready. I'm ready to receive whatever it is you're sending me. And this is about you not limiting who, what, or where it can come from. Right? Anything can bring it. So be ready for the arrival of anything, anyone, any person, any place. Be Always think that the next thing is it. Because it totally can be. Now, next card, next spot, it talks about our true desires. What do we desire most? And we have courage, right? This is the card of do it afraid. You, that's what you really want to do. You want to do it scared. You know you're scared. Everybody's scared at some time. You, you don't have a problem with your fear. You just want to make sure that you can do it even if you're terrified. And so your truest desire is to go after it. You know, the image is about the waves and they're crashing against the rocks. Um, And this is being prepared for impact. This is, uh, you know, assuming that it'll be fatal, but it's actually faded. It's actually faded. It's for you. It's designed for you. It's everything you ever wanted. And because it hasn't ever come to you and you had fear in front of it, you felt like it was everything you never wanted, right? We just we just got it wrong for just a moment. And so your desire is to get after it, to go for it, to just flow, to open your heart and to just flow, to just allow things to move in the way it's it's like being on a conveyor the the you know in the airport how they have the um the moving walkways it's like being on that like being you know going like that through life you and and that walkway is god and you realizing oh i just kind of got to jump on and then it goes like that's that energy right and so Courage means jumping on that walkway and knowing that it will take you exactly where you're meant to go. So we have renewal beneath this. Renewal is about compassion, forgiveness. You know, this is judgment. This is saying, all right, this is where I want to go. And this is where I've been. This is everything I've planted. This is These are all the investments. This is how I've been spending my time. These are the beliefs I had. These are the thoughts I had. These are the relationships I had, right? This is my collection of stuff. Now, looking at everything that I have collected up until now, what is taking me forward? What can I continue to use to plant the seeds I want to I want to nurture and grow into something and what can be tossed out because it really didn't amount or get me anywhere those are people places things habits thoughts and behaviors all of that is being assessed in order to step into this renewal and if you're carrying people places things habits behaviors that subtract you subtract from you and don't allow you to have that necessary courage then obviously that can't go forward with you that's not going to be in alignment right and you have literally making perfect sense divine flow beneath that 
it's as eventually one sublime desire takes precedence over all others to follow the Tao, the divine flow at all costs, at all costs in life, surrender. When you don't know, surrender because something bigger, greater, better, and divine is in control. So just jump on the walkway and just know that it's moving with you, for you, in your favor, not against you or to you. And even the things that come at you, that that you resist, that bring resistance, are, are strengthening those muscles. That's just a gym day. That's a workout day. That's a workout day. That is not a rest day. That's all that means. But it's for your gain. All right. Last card. Last row. This is the secret of the search. So this is like the unknown. This is the hidden. Why am I doing this? Why am I going through this? Why is my soul taking me here? Why is my soul pushing me through this? We have inner peace. Inner peace. Your soul is saying, listen, I've been here for lifetimes. I've done this again and again. This one vessel you're in right now that's only going to last however many years, I'm supposed to use it to advance me, right? And so inner peace is a part of this mission at this moment, and this is why all of this was necessary, so that you can find your place of inner peace. Inner peace is, is the moment that you let go and let God, where no matter what's going on, with the peoples, the pa the places, the things, you know that God's got it. That's inner peace, being content with the present, with what is, no matter what it looks or feels like, because you know God has it. The five of coins beneath that, five of pentacles talks about fears. Right? And because we're talking about pentacles, it's about fears surrounding lack. Right? Feeling like you don't have anything. Feeling like you don't have enough. Feeling like you can't keep up. You know? Feeling like you're always going through changes and stability is, is just not found. You know, but to have the queen of pentacles, to have divine abundance show up, that's obviously not the reality. So this is almost like carrying around a mentality that took away your peace and so it could have been your misconception of lack or just how you perceive lack and even when things are falling apart and we're losing things and things are going left it is your perception it's your perception that really determines what you're going through and so you could have been losing your peace because these you know these moments were really to help you fix your vision to know that even when it looks like things are falling apart, God's got it. Beneath that, it's outrageous openness. Outrageous openness. It says, Dear love, open me to your will. Release me from your attachments, from my attachments. Surprise and delight me with your plan." You know what's needed, and I am open to receive. Listen, because you are one, it is about you and God. Okay? Every one of the Divine Abundance cards is, is about you having communication with God and you asking to be led in a way that allows you to pretty much surrender. Surrender so that you can be in the flow. Surrender so that you can be open to receive. Surrender so that you can accept the abundance that is coming your way. Surrender so that you realize there are no limits. Right? Those are the behaviors that you are praying, pleading, and begging for so that you can better align with your path that is going to give you everything you've ever desired. Okay, ones, soul urge ones, this is what your soul is calling, pushing, pleading for. I hope this reading was beneficial. Thank you so much for stopping by. Take care.